So President Ruto has been out of the country for a bit and he went to France, of course, for a summit that was happening there. And among the different discussions that the president was involved in involves uh, a global financial system yeah, that would facilitate climate change mitigation. And among the few and notable uh, points of reference that he made is that there needs to be an equitable financial system that can assist or that can help all countries, including African countries, <laughs> to mitigate or to help mitigate our climate change. Um, he sat down, of course, he sat down with France 24. This is what he had to say. Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. Our guest today is the President of the Republic of Kenya, William Ruto. Mr. President, thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. You just attended uh, this uh, summit for a new global financing uh, pact here uh, in Paris. Uh, let's get straight to the point. Uh, the objective is to fight both climate change and poverty. Can this be done with the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank as we know them, or should we get rid of those? As we know them, we will have difficulty. Um, I think you forgot one aspect. It's just uh, a, a new global financing pact to deal with poverty, climate change, and also to contextualize the issue of a new architecture for the international financial system, especially the MDBs. In their current uh, status, it's not possible. Uh, we have three important issues that inform how we move forward on both issues of financing and also climate change. One is urgency, pace, speed, one aspect. The other aspect is scale, numbers. And the third aspect is cost, how much does it cost? In its current setup, our multilateral development banks take ages to get anything done. There is all manner of bureaucracy. Number two, Scale is limited. You always get this story, oh, you know, we have little room for concessional funding. You cannot run development anywhere in the globe, including the global south, including our continent, including Kenya, without concessional funding. And then number three is that we pay, especially those of us from the global south, especially for, for, those, uh, for those of us in the African continent, we pay up to eight times more for the same uh, resources because of something called risk. And the Secretary General of the UN was speaking to it yesterday, that why would one set of countries pay more than others? That system that others pay eight times more than others is broken. It is rigged. It is unfair. And so it is very important for us to do two things, to fix the multilateral uh, um, uh, financial architecture, and number two, to be clear about climate financing so that we can deal with the challenge of poverty and we can deal with the existential threat that uh, climate change poses to humanity. Yes, that was President Ruto uh, sitting down on an interview with France 24 where he got to talk about the aspect of equitable climate change financing. But he not only spoke about climate change financing, of course, the issue of the situation happening in Sudan was also addressed. And this bottoms or borrows from the fact that he had made an earlier statement when the infighting in South Sudan had started. This is what he said. Kenya implores the leadership of the two parties to ensure full compliance with the resolution of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development Heads of State Summit held last Sunday. This includes an immediate cessation of hostilities, allowing unrestricted humanitarian access, and extending full cooperation to the IGAD Heads of State mission when it visits Khartoum. 
So borrowing from the press conference that he had done in State House, as you've heard, um, and talking about the urgency or the importance of addressing and bringing peace to the people of Sudan, this is what he had to say during the France 24 interview. What is going on in Sudan is unacceptable because military power is being used by both parties to destroy the country and to kill civilians. It is completely unacceptable. And the war is senseless. The war is not legitimate in any way because where Sudan is before it was disrupted by this war, the people of Sudan themselves have decided to take charge of their own country. They were on the path towards a democratic process that would install for the first time in a long time a civilian administration, but it was disrupted by this war. So what is going on in Sudan is unacceptable, and that is why, as the leadership of the region, IGAD, we had a meeting two weeks ago. We agreed on a mechanism of how to deal with Sudan because, first and foremost, it is our responsibility as regional leaders, as countries that border Sudan, and as uh, countries where Sudan uh, is a member of the IGAD. We have also uh, agreed on both how to engage the military and how to develop a process that brings on board civilians and the trajectory of the people of Sudan making a decision about their own country. Yes, uh, today I had a meeting with uh, President Abiy, uh, the chair of AU, to agree on the next steps. I subsequently had uh, a meeting with President El Sisi, who is a leader in our region and brings a lot of value into the equation because they share a big border with, uh, with uh, Sudan. There are five million Sudanese in, in Egypt, so he becomes a very critical player in settling Sudan because our interest is to stop the war, stabilize Sudan, and make sure that we deal with the humanitarian crisis that currently is ongoing. It is, it is absolutely important for the people of Sudan to be able to find peace. But finding peace uh, in this region has been a problem for so many nations. And it is heartfelt or it is important for all African or East African countries to come together to be able to find solutions and not only just stop gap measures, but lasting solutions that will ensure that people within the region can, can live peacefully or can enjoy the peace that, let's say, here in Kenya we are enjoying. Among the few things that are important to note is that many institutions or African institutions are actually stepping up to offer solutions and uh, that has been mentioned by the president some of the benefits that you get to enjoy as people here is that if there's peace we can be able to foster business if there's peace uh, as children can be able to access education if there's peace there's access to healthcare, houses access to housing and all this and if there isn't it means that the humanitarian crisis not only grows but also uh development gets stalled and it is not proper for countries like this is Sudan and DRC that have the potential that have the potential to become big economies in Africa and also in the world to to be stalled or to be derailed due to political uh, oppositions or political matters some of this uh, I, I, I like to say that political uh, ideologies or political leaders sometimes are the undoing of a nation. You find that people or political leaders are so stubborn that they do not want to get off their, let me say, high seat, I wanted to call it high horse. They would not want to get off their high horse. And at the end of the day, their ambition or their pride or their drive brings to the destruction of a nation and it's absolutely sad because at the end of the day these these are things that can be avoided through dialogue through discussions and through being open to finding other than violent means peaceful means of conflict resolution so it is i think i would reiterate and say it is important that for all leaders or for all parties present that we not only play a key role in ensuring that peace returns to the region but at the same time 
political leaders, the, the, the individuals who are driving this, remember that they are, they, the country is bigger than them. The national interest is bigger than personal interest because everybody needs a home and it's not proper that we get a situation like this. This has been the Unscripted Opinion. Until next time, take care.